disappointment in the game of life. And the award for the worst DreamWorks movie of all time goes to... Probably not what you were expecting, huh? Turbo is one of the worst animated movies I've ever seen in my entire life. It is agonizingly bad. I can't remember the last time a movie gave me nothing to enjoy quite like this one. It's basically the DreamWorks equivalent of The Good Dinosaur, but at least The Good Dinosaur had amazing landscapes and like, two good scenes. Turbo has nothing. It is worthless. Every single character, relationship, and plot point in this movie feels hollow and artificial. Nothing is genuine. Nothing is earned. The plot is just Ratatouille again, but done without a single iota of that movie's brilliance. Oh, watch this animal succeed at something he really wants to do, but everyone tells him he can't do. Isn't that inspiring? No because that's all this movie is. It doesn't have any great themes or additional layers of brilliance on top of its basic premise. It is literally just a snail who goes fast and gets a chance to race. That's it. It's not dramatic, it's not enticing, it's not funny. Good God is it not funny. I didn't laugh, chuckle, smile, or even think, wow, that was a good attempt at a joke once. There is nothing here. The plot is hysterically predictable at every turn. There are no surprises whatsoever, which is ironic since this movie has a mother twist villain. Well, okay, maybe it's a good twist villain. No, it's honestly the worst twist villain I've ever seen in a feature film. Forget Mr. That Was His Mistake or Assistant Mayor Sheep Dweeb. This movie's twist villain is on the same level as the Paul Blart Mall Cop twist villain. Oh, what a surprise. It's the racer that the snail idolized for so many years, except he's really a bad guy who never once acts like a bad guy until the big reveal scene. He tells this snail, I'm gonna win the big race and you're a loser, you stupid snail. You suck. And now that the racer has revealed that he's a big meanie head to the snail and literally nobody else, he suddenly acts like a huge jerk in front of the entire viewing world. Something he never did in any of his previous races. What the fuck? That's not how you write a twist villain. That's not how you write a fucking movie. The big race at the end is embarrassing. All the cars have crashed and this snail is super close to the finish line, but oh no, he's lost his super speed. What does he do? He just gives up. Bro, you are this close and you have no competition right now. Are you fucking kidding me? He needs a pep talk from his brother to finish the race because this is a movie for babies. Literal f***ing infants. Well, gee, it's a good thing this baby movie is chock full of awful racial stereotypes as if it's actively trying to be the next Shark Tale. Well, newsflash, it will never be as memorable as Shark Tale. It's an absolute travesty that doesn't deserve to be talked about in the same breath as Shark Tale, let alone films like Megamind, Kung Fu Panda, How to Train Your Dragon, and The Prince of Egypt. I went into this marathon knowing that DreamWorks had its fair share of sucky films, and even I was insulted and appalled by the level of sheer worthlessness present in Turbo. DreamWorks, do better. Whew. I hope the next movie on the list doesn't get me as angry. Disappointment in the game of life! I mean, what the f do you want me to say? This is one of the worst sequels of all time and one of the worst animated movies I've ever had the displeasure of sitting through. It's awful by illumination standards. There's enough to talk about here to fill up three whole cinematic disaster reviews, but honestly, what is the point? You know exactly what's wrong with this film. If you accept the insane premise that destroys every good aspect the original film had going for it, you're stuck with the most frustrating stupid story Pixar has ever concocted. It is astounding how bad at their jobs these spy cars are. Imagine a Bugs Life, but Flick doesn't realize he hired circus bugs even after they tell him they're from the circus multiple times, and you basically have cars too. Everyone in this movie is a complete idiot, to the point where it's not an exaggeration to call Mater the smartest character. As you can imagine, this makes for a completely intolerable viewing experience. Like, by intolerable, I mean this movie is worse than Turbo and Shrek the Third. Yes, Pixar has made something worse than the worst DreamWorks movies. It's like they were actively trying to make a bad movie with this one. Like, there's two other Pixar cinematic disasters that I'll talk about very shortly, but with those movies, they had incredibly troubled production histories that caused them to turn out so shitty. They were failed, but earnest attempts to make a good movie. But this? No, no, no. I refuse to believe that there was 
ever any intention of making this movie good. It's impossible. I would legitimately rather rewatch Minions than this pile of shit. That's a movie that clearly had less effort put into it, yet it manages to be more mature, more entertaining, and less infuriating than this Pixar movie. I am not jesting. Cars 2 is a movie for infants and absolutely no one else. Do I not sound angry enough? Well that's because I straight up don't care. I don't give a shit about Cars, and while this movie permanently dented Pixar's morale and sent them on a decade-long losing streak, it's not like it ruined a franchise I was emotionally invested in. This is a terrible idea for a bad franchise, and this movie is the exact legacy that John John Lasseter deserves. F you. Disappointment in the game of life. Dinosaur is the most boring movie I have ever seen in my entire life. What? My number one thought when watching this movie was, perhaps I treated the good dinosaur too harshly. That's how genuinely dull dinosaur is. I don't even have much to say about it because good lord, there's nothing to talk about. It's nothing but CG abominations walking through photorealistic landscapes for 82 minutes straight. The only worth this movie has are through its effects, which I'm sure were pretty groundbreaking in 2000, but look absolutely horrible today. The true travesty of this movie is the fact that despite the awful dated animation, the first 10 dialogueless minutes were actually really cool, with a really excellent score to boot. But yeah, the moment the characters start talking, it all goes to shit. No charm, no dramatic weight, no levity, nothing. Nothing of worth here whatsoever. This is the worst Disney animated movie I've ever seen by a landslide, but it's not even worth getting mad over. It didn't insult me with its persistent awfulness like Cars 2 or Turbo, it's just pure unadulterated boredom. The only time I felt anything throughout this entire experience was whenever the love monkey opened his mouth. I felt an overwhelming urge to strangle him. A Chinese lesson is awful. And not because it's probably... Definitely? Definitely racist. It's because it's broken up into five different parts, all of which sound exactly the same. None of which sound good thanks to Chris's mediocre vocals and everyone else mainly just speak singing about how disgusting their foods are. It barely even qualifies as a song and can't be categorized as anything but a complete and utter failure. If this was a tier video, it would get an F because it sucks so much. Okay, let's get to the not horrible stuff. Disappointment in the game of life! Earwig and the Witch is worse than Cars 2. What? Every wrong decision that could possibly have been made during the production of this movie was made. Let's start with the elephant in the room. The animation. After so many stunning hand-drawn features, Ghibli finally made the jump into the realm of 3D animation, and yeah, it looks hideous. It looks worse than Toy Story, the first computer animated film ever made in 1995. There's like one or two cool moments with the visuals and the expressions are occasionally good at least, but for the most part, this is pure garbage. The character models, the environments, the textures, it all just looks like shit. But that's just the tip of the iceberg here. As an added bonus, the two main characters in this movie are horrendously unlikable, and they remain that way for the entire duration of the film. Earwig starts the film off as a spoiled brat who manipulates people in order to get what she wants all the time. And she ends the film off as a spoiled brat who manipulates people in order to get what she wants all the time. She learns absolutely nothing. She's the same unlikable and irritating twat throughout the entire film's runtime. She butts heads with this witch lady who treats her like garbage all the time and never shows an ounce of kindness until the very end, which, oh boy, we will get to. 95% of the movie, we just see her rudely ordering her new adopted daughter around. And yet, you're not rooting for Earwig to get back at her because Earwig is so insufferable. But you're not rooting for the witch lady either because she's a huge bitch. This movie is actual hell! I guess the Mandrake is okay and potentially interesting, but the movie doesn't ever feel like focusing on him that much, so f*** me, I guess. Another really cool, just, just super awesome thing about this movie is that it's the only Ghibli film I would describe as derivative. 
And that's too kind of a word to use. This shit is like if they took a greatest hits medley of previous Ghibli films and then ran it over with their car. Enjoy. There's a talking cat companion and witches because remember Kiki's delivery service? There's a young girl forced to work extremely hard for a mean old boss lady because don't you love spirited away? Oh look, they gotta make breakfast and have breakfast together and bond as a family and the demons help with their breakfast. Because yes, I also watched Howl's Moving Castle. Wow, this guy is a writer. I, I guess we needed to dash a whisper of the heart too. Sure, why not? Throughout this entire Ghibli ranking, I never once felt like any of their films were copying their previous ones until we got to this dumpster fire. At least Cars 2 didn't blatantly copy what came before it. At least it had good looking animation. At least it actually finished its story. This movie abruptly ends out of nowhere, with none of the character conflicts actually resolved. Earwig successfully kerpranks the witch lady and gets both her and the mandrake absolutely furious at her, with only 20 minutes left in the movie. She then goes into the mandrake's private quarters without permission, finds out they were in a band with her mom, and now the mandrake suddenly likes her. And so does the witch, who literally has not said a kind thing to her once throughout this entire movie. Suddenly, in the last 10 minutes of the film, it it's a happily ever after now. Six months pass and they all suddenly love each other for some reason and everyone in the house is a slave to the spoiled brat earwake and her mom suddenly comes back with no explanation as to where she was or why she came back at all. Isn't that great? <laughs> this movie! Its few likable elements have been done before in much better Ghibli movies, its characters are horrendously unlikable, its animation is insanely unpleasant, its story is objectively unfinished. This? is my least favorite animated movie of all time. If I were Goro Miyazaki, I would flee the country at this point. I would literally never be able to look my father in the eyes again. Let's all just pretend this never happened and move on with our lives. Disappointment in the game of life! To be perfectly honest, it feels really unfair to rank Surf's Up 2 Wave Mania as a part of this list for one simple fact. It is not a movie. It is a feature-length commercial. And no, I'm not exaggerating. This isn't like other movies that are filled with excessive product placement, yet at their core can still be considered feature films, like Space Jam 2, Ralph Breaks the Internet, or even the Emoji Movie, which I'm sure you all expected to be at the bottom of this list. And now as we speak, you're probably editing your smug comments that read, I will bet my entire life savings that the Emoji Movie's at the bottom of this list. There has never been a more obvious bottom spot in any ranking video ever. And you're editing those comments to just say, Oh. Shit. You see, none of you understand the soul-sucking awfulness that is this commercial. And yes, I fully consider Surf's Up 2 to be nothing more than a commercial for WWE. This product was conceived as a commercial when WWE approached Sony regarding making a product that would help expand their brand and reach a new generation of audiences. So yeah, it is a textbook advertisement that they slapped the Surf's Up IP onto because they fundamentally misunderstood everything about the original movie. Every single element of this commercial is wrong. Spoilers for later in the list, but the original Surf's Up is pretty Kino, as the kids say. It has an extremely unique mockumentary format, like the entire movie is presented as if it's a documentary, with shaky cam, characters acknowledging the camera crew, and just an overall vibe of authenticity. It's one of the most unique animated films I've ever seen, solely based on how it's presented. Do you think this commercial kept that framing device up or evolved the concept in some way? Who the do you think you're kidding? Of course not! That would take effort! And why put effort into a literal WWE commercial? They just film it like any normal quote-unquote movie would be filmed. They could only be bothered to make like 12 character models for this commercial. The WWE stand-in animals are incredibly flat, boring characters, because we can't do anything that paints any of them in a negative light, because that would go against the purpose of this advertisement. But you know who we're perfectly fine with painting in a negative light? The f***ing main character. Cody in this is insufferable, mainly because he straight up just is not the same character. He's an annoying prick who's overly obsessed with winning and being famous. Even though the entire point of the first movie was that he learns that winning and being famous isn't important. He learned all that from his idol in a really compelling way. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, what idol? 
Big Z? Never heard of him! Apparently, this whole time, contrary to everything the first film tells you, Cody was never inspired to be an amazing surfer like Big Z. He was inspired by Penguin John Cena and his legion of super friends. In this commercial, Big Z might as well have never existed, and Cody's entire backstory and motivation as a character is thrown in the garbage. I have never seen a more perfect example of character assassination in my life. The writers of Game of Thrones could probably watch this commercial and say to themselves, well, at least we didn't f*** up that badly. I could tell five minutes into this ad that it was one of the worst things I've ever seen. But the thing that really solidified it was later in the movie, when they're sailing over lava and Cody goes out of his way to try and sabotage Tank. Which in case you've seen the first movie, which these writers clearly did not, is the thing that Tank does to other surfers because he is the villain. But let's have our protagonist do the same thing in a much more dangerous scenario in the second installment after he's already learned a lesson in the first installment. And that valuable lesson he learned in the first movie was not don't attempt to murder people in order to win a competition. Because that's something he already f***ing KNOWS! As a result of this chicanery, he nearly gets his best friend Chicken Joe killed in Molten Lava, and doesn't seem to be concerned about Joe's life, he's just concerned about justifying his shitty actions to the WWE. So they rightfully tell him to fuck off, and he does, and you might as well just end this here, who even cares anymore? Surf's Up 2 makes Cars 2 look like The Empire Strikes Back, and it makes Earwig and the Witch look like Citizen Kane. Dear Evan Hansen? More like, Dear God, it's so much better than this piece of fucking ass. I have not hated a product this much since Artemis Fowl, which, if you remember, is my actual least favorite movie of all time. This train wreck literally only exists so Sony could suck off these WWE stars while destroying everything the original Surf's Up had going for it. It has absolutely nothing to offer and should not be watched by anyone, regardless of if they like the original film or not. Vince McMahon fantasizes about drinking milk directly from a fish's udder. Yes. Disappointment in the game of life. To be honest, I didn't even rewatch it for this ranking. I have nothing more to say about this movie. It's all been covered at length in its own dedicated video. Twice. But for the sake of this ranking's cohesion, let's TLDW that vid real quick. This movie sucks. It assassinates Ralph's character and turns him into a blithering man baby who freaks the fuck out all the time because his only friend, a 10 year old child, wants to hang out with other people and do other things sometimes. Both of them are horrible friends to each other in ways that don't make sense based on how they acted in the first film. Also, instead of exploring a logical concept for a Wreck-It Ralph sequel like online gaming, they're in the internet because we have to acknowledge products and eBay is a major plot point. And also, Google is here. Isn't that cool? I love Google so much. eBay Amazon is, is here too. Point. Wow, and that's amazing. Google I can't even... Isn't yes, cool? thank you. <laughs> Can you believe they got YouTube and also for this? Google I'm so here. happy Isn't about this. Cool? Uh, oh, look at that. It's like yeah, Twitter. Yeah, Twitter yeah, yeah, wow, that's Twitter. Do you want to buy products yeah. now? Uh, Do you want to buy Google these now? Like oh my Disney. Oh my god. That's so cool. We're at oh the Disney, Disney World place. Oh wow. God, Buzz so Lightyear cool. to Disney infinity and beyond. Wow. Buzz, wow oh it's Baymax. Disney, that's oh nice. God, that's Whoa. It's Star wow, Wars. It's I fucking wow. love Star Wars. Star Wars. Baby Star Wars. Groot. He, he likes to say I am wow, Groot. And that's oh like his catchphrase. Oh my god. Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. All the Disney princesses are here and that's epic. Merida from the hit 2012 picture film Brave is here too. The movie tries to tell a compelling story about letting your friends go, but it utterly fails because of how bastardized the characters are and because the directors forgot that leaving your game was what the villain did in the first movie, but now Vanellope will do it with no conversation about it or consequences. There's a good song and Spamton shows up. That's all the good stuff in this movie. That's, that's it. It didn't have time for other good stuff like Felix or Calhoun or jokes that were actually funny because Ralph was too busy making an eye Disney? makeup tutorial. Oh, God, oh look so at that. He's a screaming goat and now. Flossing. Oh my god, I love Flossing in Fortnite. Hey look, there's Fortnite. Wow, he's gonna be so happy with the Oh my god, I love Flossing. Epic baking fail. Whoops, I can't believe I failed the baking so bad. Oopsies, is this good yet? Is this worth the fucking Academy Award for Best Animated Feature yet? 3 out of 10, it's the worst movie they made this decade by a landslide and I don't want to think about it ever again. I'm sure I will, however. Anyway, yeah, that's the only outright bad Disney animated movie this decade. Now for the mediocre ones. This is gonna take a while.